The Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BSF Canada and Invigor Hybrid Canola. Hey, Kara Oosterhouse here with RealAgriculture.com. I'm back here today with another Canola School episode, and I have here with me Leighton Blashko, who is with BASF. We are in central Alberta today in the Sherwood Park area, and uh, we're, we're looking at in-crop fertility, specifically looking at sulfur and its importance to canola. Do you want to tell me a bit about your messaging there? Sure. Thanks so much uh, for the opportunity, Kara. I guess when we talk about nutrients, if we're looking the big picture you know nutrients are obviously important for crop production especially important for you know to us uh, being canola production and if we hone right in on sulfur it has some pretty important roles in the development of canola and I guess maybe if we want to start right there probably the two most important things are that uh, sulfur is involved in protein synthesis and it's also involved in uh, in photosynthesis so you know the greening up uh, of your of your plant and keeping it growing uh, nice and healthy so two very important features of, of sulfur are are those I guess you know if we were to look back at how do you determine what the needs of uh, canola plant are for sulfur probably we get back down to soil testing and you want to make sure that you've done a proper fertility plan to so that you're setting yourself up for success and, and now when it comes to sulfur it, another question is you know are we putting it on the right way are we putting it on at the right time um, do you want to kind of elaborate on that sure for canola plants uh, the there's a few different uh, I guess considerations. In terms of canola production, canola plants can use the sulfate form of sulfur. So you can, a producer can buy sulfur that's the sulfate form, so ammonium sulfate is probably the most common one, and that is one form of sulfur that you could could buy and, and apply. Another form would be elemental sulfur. Now el elemental sulfur needs to be converted or uh, transferred over to the available form and so it's not immediately available to canola plants. So that might influence your choice A of product or B of when you would apply it. So in the springtime typically people would use uh, the ammonium sulfate or the sulfate form of sulfur, the SO4 form. If you're a little bit earlier or early spring, or if you're able to apply your sulfur the fall before, then an elemental form could be utilized, as well as a sulfate form could be utilized too. So finding out which form of sulfur you're gonna wanting to use is important, and then that influences the time of when you would put it on. And, and talk a bit about how important it is to canola. You know, if we're not paying attention to that sulfur, not doing those soil tests, and you're, you know, we're depleting it year after year, Talk about what that plant can look like. Yeah, from, from some stuff that I've read, I know that across many parts of Western Canada, sulfur can actually be deficient across quite a large part of the canola producing region. So we really, really, really need to pay attention to sulfur levels, both uh, in the soil and or if you're uh, after the plant has been seeded and you're wondering about sulfur, you can also look at tissue tests and or look for some visual clues from the plant itself to see whether you might be picking up some visual signs of a sulfur deficiency. So talk me through some of these visual cues. What does sulfur deficiency actually look like on a plant? Yeah, on a canola plant, I think there's probably two places where you would notice it. On some of the newest leaves, you could notice some cupping. So you would look at the newest growth. So if I can maybe pull up a plant. Uh, the older leaves, of course, are near the bottom. The newer leaves are near the top. Because sulfur is not that uh, mobile in the plant, it's the newer leaves that would show the symptoms first. And you might see some cupping um, and reduced or restricted growth, but cupping would be a clear one to look for. And then if you get to a stage of canola where you have uh, are, are flowering already, that's the other place that we can look for canola. So I picked out a probably a canola that was a volunteer canola here from this field. It came up really early. It is actually in the early flower stage. And looking at the flowers, a clear thing that you would notice is that they can be a much, much paler and obviously paler yellow color. 
So they might still be yellow, but they're more yellow to white rather than a very uh, vibrant yellow like canola flowers typically are. And, and what can sulfur deficiency have uh, as far as impacts on final yield? Yeah, I think there's uh, some significant uh, yield decreases. I don't know, uh, you know, I guess each each case would uh, would be different, but I know that it can be a very significant impact on yield. It wouldn't be just a couple percent. It'll be, a, you know, it can be in many bushels uh, of yield loss that we'd be talking about with, uh, with a sulfur deficiency. In terms of applying sulfur, typically you wouldn't want to put sulfur in the seed row. A lot of times that position for at your at seeding is a lot is is safe for your phosphorus or your phosphate fertilizer sulfur can be quite um, uh, mobile in the soil it's not mobile in the plant but it can be mobile in the soil so a broadcast application can work or putting it in the band away from the seed row would be an, uh, the other recommendation do you recommend either way if you're in like i mean central alberta southern alberta we're, we're in quite dry conditions any any recommendations there yeah as far as managing you know wet versus dry conditions for canola production and how you would manage your sulfur i guess uh, there's um, there's a couple of schools of thought a lot of times the vast majority of people will plan their sulfur fertility program to be put on as as a fertilizer and that fertilizer like i said would either go on the fall before you would be seeding canola or in the spring either right before seeding as a broadcast application or in a band be, uh, to the off to the side uh, of your seed. The other thing, uh, so that's when it, what's typical, but the other way that you could, and, and then you're managing, you're planning for a certain crop yield goal or a target, and you're putting all your fert fertility up front. The other way of doing it is to maybe put a portion of it there and then you could also apply some in-crop at the maybe bolting stage. Uh, that would be when you could either A, uh, top up the sulfur if you've got really good growing conditions and you hadn't put enough uh, fertilizer on because you were maybe not planning for as big of a crop. Or second of all, if you're seeing some symptoms and you're seeing a deficiency in a field, it can be overcome by applying sulfur at that, uh, you know, we're probably not quite there yet, but toward the middle to end end of June is when typically you'd be at, at that rosette or bud stage and you can um, overcome some sulfur deficiencies or top up your sulfur with an application, a, a broadcast application at that stage.